Ladies and gentlemen, Season 3 Reloaded is officially here, and with it, we got a bunch of new content. And as per usual, when the new content comes out, I like to drop a video going over all of those things. Earlier today, I uploaded a video going over the next Call of Duty title. If you want to see that, linked down in the description. Speaking of that, when this update goes live at noon Eastern Standard Time, I am going to be streaming some of the new content, some of the new zombies content, the new missions, the new warlord, things along those lines. But if you miss that, those video highlights are going to go up on my second channel, also linked down in the description. So if you want to check out any of that stuff, it's all down below. But as far as this video goes, we are going to be going over everything new, all of the patch notes, all of the changes, what is new and what has changed with season three reloaded. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right. So we are going to start with Warzone, and I'm going to try to go through this quickly. A lot of the weapon changes that happened actually happened in both. So we're going to be able to move through that a little bit quicker. I'll try to cover the big ones that happened in one or the other, uh, but we're going to start out with Warzone because I think the patch notes are a little bit better, especially when it comes to the weapon changes. Uh, but moving in here, the first thing that we have is just some customization changes, but then we have a big one. There's something new called weapon prestige camos. So essentially, once you have all your weapons leveled up and you've unlocked the camos, you can then go in and get weapon prestige camo. So for each weapon, you're going to be able to earn 150,000 weapon XP, as you're seeing here. When you do so, you're going to get a molten gold animated camo for that weapon. Now, it's not stated if you unlock this for all weapons, if there's another one, maybe a platinum uh, molten camo that you get for all of the weapons. As of right now, this is all that they have, but they say that they're going to add more of these with each and every season which is pretty cool. Um, but as of now, with Season 3 Reloaded, they are now in the game. Moving into the Warzone things, though, we have for years extend Bunkers. It's completely redacted, going to be an Easter egg. When we find more about that, I will keep you guys updated and informed with what's going on with those. Rebirth Island, we have Loaded Resurgence, which is resurgence where you drop in with your loadout weapons, and Lockdown, we know what Lockdown is. As far as playlists this week, we have Loaded Resurgence Trios, Ranked Play Trios, on Rebirth Island, Plunder, Yurzikstan Quads. We have Battle Royale, Solos, Duos, Trios, and Quads on Yurzikstan. No information as to if we're ever going to be getting some sort of big map ranked or not. And then we have Resurgence, Solos, and Quads on map rotation, and then Quads on Rebirth Island only. The new things that we are getting here are Champion's Quest is now going to be on Fortune's Keep and Vondel. We have audio improvements to ascenders, parachutes, and enemy footsteps. There's going to be new noises, two distinct audio sounds for ascenders, which is a good thing, as well as new revive sounds on Rebirth Island as well. Rebirth Island, we are getting a new public event, which is heavy armor. That's going to upload, update your total health points up to 200, changing the time to kill, which is going to change things up. We also have our weapon trade stations, which are coming in. We know what those are. We also have the utility box, which is a combination of our armor and munitions box put together into one. There's another thing coming with that that we'll see in a second. Foresight, which kind of shows you where the zone is going next. What's interesting is it said can be acquired via redacted, so we don't know yet. Similarly, with the specialist perk package, it is coming as well, and it can be acquired via redacted as well. There's also another redacted upgrade with the arrival of new excellent gear Kony has updated redacted to make good use of them so no idea what that is i'm guessing though it's those goggles that we talked about that give you kind of enhanced vision for a limited amount of time i could be wrong but that's my guess if you have any other ideas let me know down in the comments also variable times of day are coming to rebirth island so in other words sunset overcast and foggy just going to make the map look different no big changes to the map though as we talked about, Ascender improvements as well as Elevator Ascenders, so that's coming. Resurgence, new events, high stakes, high stakes crates now give a utility box instead of an ammo and armor box. Uh, we have a medicine cabinet. These will now drop one stim down from two, so nerf to the medicine cabinet. Our spy drone contract is updated, so it's a little bit easier to do. Biometric scanners, they reduce the animation time on them. And then boot camp, I'm not even going to go into that. We also have our new weapon, the BAL-27. If you played Advanced Warfare, you know what that's all about, as well as three aftermarket parts, the Jack Patriot, the Jack Wardens, and the Jack Atlas kit are coming. Now, as far as our weapon adjustments, they've changed how they show them. They look much better. So, Raven, good job. Uh, but most of these changes for assault rifles here also happened in Modern Warfare as well, but we'll get into that in a second. Most of these, I'm going to stop when it's not this. Most of these are just changing the hip spread on the weapons, making them worse for assault rifles. One difference that we have is with the Ram 7, the max damage decreased. So, in other words, there is a nerf to the Ram 7. The MCW actually got a buffed. 
increased mid damage, increased min damage, uh, and max damage range increased. So a buff all around to the MCW. The FR556 got a nerf to the aim down sides better bullet velocity, but just a ton of changes to various different attachments. So this actually happened both in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone. So I'm not going to go into that, but if you want to check it out, you can pause it. The M13B, the Modern Warfare 2 weapon, got max damage increased. So in other words, a slight buff. Headshot multiplier decreased, so a nerf there. And the upper torso modifier increased. So all in all, a bit better, but worse headshot damage. Tempest Razorback near mid damage increased and mid damage increased, so a buff for that. The FR Advancer near mid damage increased as well as mid damage increased and mid damage increased, so a buff all around to the FR Advancer. The SOA Subverter, the mid damage decreased, so in other words, a nerf to the SOA Subverter. The MTZ 762 decreased the aim down sights time, so a small buff to that. And the fully auto SO14, this one also changed in Modern Warfare 3, we'll get to that in a minute, decreased the sprint to fire time and decreased aim down sight. So in other words, a buff to the movement of the SO14. Moving in to SMGs. So max damage decreased, near mid damage decreased. So the HRM got nerfed. The Ram 9 increased recoil. So the recoil's worth, that is a nerf to the Ram 9. The Rival 9, however, got max damage increased and max damage range decreased, but the lower arm and lower torso modifiers increased. So overall, a bit of a buff, but the range is just a little bit worse. The WSB 9 decreased sprint to fire time, so it's a little bit faster, a little bit better, so a buff to that. The Striker mid damage increased to 28 up from 23, so a buff to the Striker. The KV broadside, just a change. They removed the aim down sight spread for the KV broadside with the jawbreaker. And the riveter decreased aim down sight spread by 10%. So slight buff to that one. Moving into the LMGs, the DG58 upper torso modifier increase. So slight increases to modifier, so small buff. The Bruin MK9 got a nerf. The max damage decreased as well as the leg modifier decreased. So nerf to the Bruin. The Eradicator Faster ADS and sprint to fire, so buff for that. Moving into our sniper rifles, decreased bullet velocity for the Stalker and the Cat AMR. The Moors got increased aim down sights time and decreased bullet velocity, so a nerf to the Moors. Moving into the handguns, movement speed basically got increased all around. WSP Stinger has a bit of a better torso multiplier, uh, but again, more movement changes and then akimbo changes to the 9mm Damon. These are actually the same changes that we see in Modern Warfare 3. The Bunker Buster, I think, got a buff, but also a nerf in some ways. The important thing is, though, is the drop time reduced to two seconds down from four, so it's going to hit faster with less of a warning, so keep that in mind. Also, just some UI and bug fixes. I'm not going to go into those, but that is everything for Warzone. Moving into Modern Warfare 3, I'm actually going to start with zombies. We're throwing everything off on this one. As far as zombies goes, we have their new story mission titled Union, our new Dark Ether Rift, which is going to give us new schematics. The Dead Wire Detonators, which gives you dead wire on your explosives. The Golden Mask Filter, which automatically regenerates your mask. And the Sergeant Spray, which gives you, instead of a dog, a human that shoots bullets, which is kind of cool. There's a new Warlord called Rainmaker. Gameplay improvements, we have the stash storage increased finally from 10 to 20, so not perfect, but way bigger, double the size. Uh, and, and an exfil based schematics cooldown, so when you exfil, your schematics are going to cool down so you can use them faster. I don't know why that wasn't just there from the beginning. And then overall, just some changes as well. So that's the big stuff for zombies. I'm going to be streaming that later today when it goes live. So be sure to check out my Twitch and even my second channel for highlights to go up down in the description. Moving into Modern Warfare 3. We're going to hammer through this one really quickly. We have our two new maps, Grime, which is 6v6, and Checkpoint, which is 6v6 as well. It's like the stronghold portion of the Rebirth Island map. Again, the Battle 27 is coming. This is going to be unlocked via the classified section of your battle pass. Our aftermarket parts, our new more modes, we have Escort, where you kind of push the robot. We have Minefield, where when you kill someone or you get killed, you drop a mine. I will not be playing that. And then Arcade, where you fight for control of weapons kitted with game-changing modifiers. Not exactly sure how that one will work yet, but still cool. We have the Call of Duty Endowment event, which is coming, but it's going to last two weeks, and that's the only one that they have in there. So I don't know if they're adding in more, but for now, that is the only event that we have coming. Again, it goes into the weapon prestige camos that we already talked about. 
some gameplay, UI fixes, things along those lines, as well as some progression fixes and map changes on some of the new maps. Um, modes making some changes as well. For example, one in the chamber, Raider pings are no longer active until three alive players remain. Now, weapon changes. Some of these I'm not going to go into. However, again, with the assault rifles, a lot of changes to hip spread, things like that. The DG-56 got decreased minimum damage. So in other words, a nerf to the DG-56. Same goes with the FR-556. We have the Lockman 762 from Modern Warfare 2, which increased max damage range, increased near medium damage range, and increased medium damage range. So a buff to the Lockman 762. Similarly, the M13C increased maximum damage range, increased near medium damage range. So a buff to the M13C as well. SOA Subverter got added near medium damage range. So that adds 33 damage at 38.1 meters, but decrease the minimum damage from 33 to 26. So in other words, a long range nerf for the SOA subverter. The MTZ 762 decreased the aim down sight time. So a small buff to that one. And then some changes to the semi-auto versus full auto modes of specific weapons like the FTAC recon and the SO14. The submachine guns, we see a similar thing to what we saw in Warzone, but with the Ram 9 decreased maximum damage range. So nerf to that weapon. AMR-9, however, got a buff to the near mid damage as well as uh, the medium and minimum damage. So a big buff to the AMR-9. HRM-9 increased medium damage range. So buff to that. WSP-9 got decreased sprint to fire time. So it moves a little bit faster. A buff to the WSP-9. However, the WSP swarm decreased maximum damage range just slightly. So a nerf to that one. We see similar shotgun changes to what we saw in Warzone. The Tack Eradicator, though, got decreased sprint to fire time and decreased aim down sights time, so a buff to that. The Holger 26 increased neck damage multiplier, so a very, very small buff to that one. The Moore's Sniper Rifle got increased aim down sights and decreased lower leg, so a nerf to that. And then we have the same handgun changes that we saw within Warzone as well. So in other words, a bit better movement with most of the handguns. The only other thing for weapons is the Gladiator decreased standing lunge distance to match the combat knife. So a nerf to the Gladiator there. Also some perk changes. These are interesting. So the climbing boots increase climbing and mantling speed and reduces fall damage. The all-terrain boots significantly increase movement speed, disables tactical sprint. So that's a strange one. Running sneakers improved sprint to fire time while using tactical sprint by 25%. The stalker boots increased strafe speed is now omnidirectional rather than just lateral and added walking smoothness benefit so your gun doesn't bounce around as much when you're aimed on sights. The commando gloves improved sprint to fire speed by 10% and added the ability to cancel reload by using tactical sprint. And finally, the assault gloves improved hip fire spread while moving by 15%. Now, two things that weren't mentioned in here is number one, that those goggles, the improved vision goggles, they didn't mention anything about that in the notes, as well as the, I believe it's either EMD mine or EMP mine, where you throw down a proximity mine and when it goes off, it'll actually track your enemies on the minimap for a small amount of time. They just weren't mentioned in there, unless I missed them, but I didn't see them. Uh, but those are supposed to be coming as well. But that summarizes Season 3 Reloaded. Try to get through it as quickly as possible. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Tons more content coming, so make sure you're subscribed to everything and check everything out down in the description. But as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace. We are, we are reaching for the stars, but we're